All right, first time I'm actually doing a voiceover. Uh, I'm going to give a little demo of the latest changes to um, my uh, wrapper for the HID API libraries. Um, I'm going to be using another library wrapper, um, the LCB uh, fluid synth wrapper. Um, to give it some something more interesting than just uh, highlighting buttons on and off. So uh, here we go. Uh, load the uh, fluid synth synthesizer. Uh, pick a, a sound bank that's uh, from a sound font file. Pick a preset. Make sure it's working. This is uh, my piano widget, another live code builder project. But this demo isn't about that. It's about the HID library. So I've set up uh, a filtering system uh, on the test stack that what it does is it, it uh, parses a string that you provide and there's uh, identifiers like sh uh, signed integer and um, you know a bit array would is like uh, buttons corresponding to the bits coming in these are uh, the bytes coming in from the HID library uh, as raw bits and then the filter parses those bits using the information provided to it and it sends it a value, uh, looks for a value that it can use to, to do something in live code with. So these are the names of buttons, and these buttons correspond, like in this button array, is B1. That would be B1. Actually, uh, what is that? Anyway, PS1 would be the PlayStation 1 button, PlayStation 2 button. It's a generic style, PlayStation style controller. I have an adapter that is a PlayStation joystick adapter for the old PlayStation 2 uh, controllers that have an analog and digital switch on them. That So they have two different modes. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and load the library which is already compiled and with extension builder so it's already set up so now that's loaded I can list my HID devices and I'm looking for this Green Asia um, is the adapter that the PS2 controller is hooked up to and so I'm going to copy the system path from that one and I'm going to paste it paste it into this spot right here where it says paste system path and uh, now I can open that from the path and and run it through my filter and this this is a little pulling rate to determine the speed that it's um, pulling the the HID device which in this case is the joystick adapter so once it's started pulling now I already have scripts set up in these buttons that send MIDI notes to the fluid synth library so whenever you click it stops the polling that's kind of a fail safe so I can get out of it if I get into a run loop the other thing you can hit the escape key will also work so I have a, several different adapter um, uh, several different profiles for different HID devices I have a, a Bluetooth PS3 controller Nintendo Wii remote a sideways and a vertical uh, and then here's the adapter a digital version and an analog version I'm going to use the analog version um, 
So with the analog version, it gives it separate D-pad buttons and a little animated knob control for the analog sticks. And you can see the uh, all the buttons work. any perimeter assigned to the knob tool so now if I if I switch to um, uh, um, the um, digital mode the d-pads don't do anything because it's not the right um, uh, descriptor um, in here so I need to switch to digital That didn't work. I put it on digital. Hmm. profile then the analog stick on the right actually does the, those buttons and the d-pad emulates the um, analog thing so really there's only one profile for this controller that that's needed I didn't need to save the digital one because the analog profile does both properly. You can the buttons and fast, fast enough that I can get. There's plenty more optimization I can do for this. What I'm trying to do is get this this uh, system of um, descriptors created and you know solidify the direction it's going to go in. Because um, then I'm going to integrate that right into the HID wrapper library, and that'll be quicker because right now this has a very long script that filters through and has different branches um, for different uh, descriptors skip in a byte integrated uh, integer branch uh, signed integer branch and is directly sending the the mouse ups and mouse downs to these the buttons uh, but what I'm going to do is have that system be integrated into the library and it'll be sending the bytes already converted. Um, you know, right now I'm, I'm doing some base conversions from bits to, uh, you know, sign decimal or whatever. And that, uh, that takes some time. But if I integrate it into the library, it'll be coming out already in the format it needs to based on a um, a descriptor format that I'm 
is going to be a property you can set in the library. Now, if, if you look at the here, I have a, a preliminary setup for it. If I hit the set button filter, it's going to take this field and try to set it in the library. And the library right now just parses it into um, an array and uh, logs it. So you can see there's the different elements of the array. The array there's a right stick and it's assigned integer. Right stick horizontal and it's assigned integer. Left stick sign integer. Left stick vertical sign integer. Then ignore is. Uh, you can see it's a. Uh, it'll ignore that byte. Not really sure where that's coming from. Oh, there is one in there. Um, so then, then there's this button array. Is this button that's the the, the one, two, a, b. Um, nibble is a four bit. A nibble colon D pad is is actually four bits. Um, a nibble is four bits of a byte, and a, a crumb is two bits of a byte. You can also use a crumb in here, and it will parse two bits or four bits for a crumb or nibble, and give that the value to whatever you provide it here. Now. You can see as it's coming out of the filter, there's B1, there's B, the first button of that button array, and it's false because I don't think that button actually is linked to anything. That could probably be ignore. I'm going to change that now. Make this bit ignored too. Now when I filter it, that should disappear. Yeah. And everything that it doesn't have to parse, every bit that it skips, or byte that it skips, makes it go a little faster. Obviously, with something like um, uh, a music, um, using it for a musical device, you would want the uh, as little latency as possible. So you want the the filtering to be ex extremely fast, as fast as possible, so that there's no delay from the user pressing a button or moving a stick to the the data coming in through the computer. Um, that's all. I'm uh, hoping to get some commentary. Oh, let me show you this one. The animated stick has a split in here where you can actually turn that off. And instead of animating my little knobs, it'll uh, move those sliders instead. You can see both sticks working. So... Eh, just something else to show you. It's actually uh, quicker to animate the the knobs. The knob animation is actually a little quicker and more responsive than animating the two sliders on top of each other, which is what these are. There's a little slight delay doing that. Whereas if I use this animation... There's no delay. It's it's very quick. So quick it doesn't even interfere with the buttons much, if at all. Uh, but the, again, there's a, other optimizations I could do, even just in this in this script here instead I think I have it uh, trigger everything at once at the end after it's done parsing the list which right now it's sending immediately as it's parsing 
Um, I don't think that's going to be okay in the future because if it's coming out of uh, a live code builder library pre-parsed, it it probably won't uh, be a good idea to have that kind of system set up. But we'll see. Anyway, that's all.